almost late today. Good morning. It is the 28th day of November. Flying through uh, last part of the year for certain, aren't we? <clears throat> Good morning, Lynette and Susan, Mark. Glad you're on here today. <laughs> we'll uh, get started here in a minute. I didn't know if I would get on here or not this morning. Uh, care if Matt are still here until uh, tomorrow. Um, I will not be on here tomorrow. I'll be taking them to the airport, hopefully. Sounds like the weather might not be the most agreeable, <clears throat> but we will uh, we will do our best. So, <clears throat> but don't plan on me being on here. Uh, tomorrow, but I hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving and uh, just a good time with family and friends and and uh, glad you guys are on here. Brandy, glad you're on here too. And Sharon, Dreama, Todd, back up there in Windy, Wyoming. Is it snowing up there in uh, in uh, Cheyenne today? Did you guys get any snow out of any of this? I'm just curious. It. Uh, but Jan, glad you're here. Hope you had a, a nice Thanksgiving too. Were your kids able to come in for Thanksgiving? I hope so. And, uh, Todd, glad you're here too. Driving that truck, <clears throat> staying busy on the road with all the crazies. <laughs> well, it is good to uh, see each one. Like I said, I hope everyone had a, yeah later today yeah i, I kind of wondered about that todd i i'm kind of concerned for the kids getting out of here tomorrow um okay well i'm glad your mom was out there jan so well i've been <clears throat> dealing a little bit with a with a head cold um not bad though other than my ear has been plugged this is the fourth day going so I can't, can't hear anything on my left ear, but <laughs> anyway, we'll, uh, well, let's get started this morning and, uh, just hard to believe Thanksgiving is over now and we are well on our way now to, uh, Christmas. And so what are we, we're probably down into the 20 some days till Christmas now. Thane is going nuts. He's been doing a countdown since like 100 days till Christmas or something. So he's all excited. <laughs> and uh, I guess I should be too, right? <clears throat> well, I want to start off today um, I, again thinking about the, just the, the thankfulness that, that we ought to have for all the things that uh, 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 that God has given us in, in Luke 24, last two verses or so of, uh, uh, well, not quite uh, second to last two verses, but it says, and he led them out as far as to Bethany and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven and I uh, was reading that in Chapel's uh, uh, devotional this morning about the the blessings of God and giving thought to that. And, and then I, I think of uh, a, a message that um, <clears throat> one of our supporting missionaries, Chuck Donnelly, he's a missionary to uh, uh, the Rock of Ages prison ministry and good man, good friend. And, and, uh, I heard him preach a message one time out of Psalm 68 and, um, verses 19 and 20. And it says, blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us with benefits, even the God of our salvation, say law. He that is our God is a God of salvation and unto God, the Lord belong the issues from death. And, um, just thankful, you know, thankful for the, the blessings that that God has given us. And let, let's always be thankful, be thankful for uh, the things that God's doing in our lives. It's, it's so easy to get caught up in the, 
the craziness and and look, you know, I was reading the I was reading some of the news this morning and those characters, there's just no happiness in their lives. Whether it's the the news itself, I mean, they 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 know what what attracts readers, and so they sensationalize things. They they exaggerate things on both sides, our side, their side, both. They 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 want the viewers, they want the readers, and so they embellish many things. And and but but it's always said on the negative aspect of things and. <clears throat> and they they do that. All you got to do is follow the money in that, and they they think that the money is going to bring them happiness. And all they're doing is falling in a trap that uh, we see where there is no joy in their lives. And and so often we as believers allow them to to get under our skin and and get into our head and and uh, ruin our day. And <clears throat> there's just no reason for that. So. Let's, let's remember the blessings that God gives us. And then Spurgeon wrote, wrote this, and powerful statement. That man always had such a way with words. And, and uh, this is what Spurgeon said about blessings. He said, God's goodness to us is not merely uh, bene volens, which must be Latin, all right, uh, in, in which he wishes us well. But it is uh, beneficence of good doing. His gifts and benefits are deeds of goodness, acts of goodness. He doeth to us that which is good. He, he doth not only wish us well and speak to us well and direct us well, but he doeth well unto us. And, and uh, how, how powerful is that? I mean, we, we think about how gracious and and patient our Lord is, and, and to think about the actions of, of goodness that, that God shows us. Not only is he good, but and not only does he wish us good, but he does good to us. And, and uh, we, we just ought to be so thankful for all of the blessings that, that God gives us, and, and just remain faithful to him, and, and um don't don't let the cares of the world don't don't let the uh, I, I don't know sometimes i think about these special days that we have and the the special holidays that we have and um sometimes i think we we let them be far more than what they are and, and in doing so it, it brings about uh, stay with me, all right? So it, it brings about uh, like a depression or a sadness because maybe all your family's not there with you on a special day. And, and um, you know, and, and we put a lot of stock in those things. And, and I, I know that there are some people that just don't look forward to those special days and um, because of the people that they miss. And, and uh you know, I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I just, I, I feel bad for that. I, I feel uh, sad for those that, that um, are, are grieving during these times. And, and the thing that, that we have to do, and I know it's a challenge, is look to the benefits, look, look to the blessings that, that God gives you and, and to all of us during those times. And, and to, realize how good God is to us. And, and even in the midst of our sorrow and even in the midst of the storms that, that, that we go through, that God is still good and, and remember that. And you know, the, the more you rely on the promises of God, the deeper your faith will be, the stronger your faith will be. And, and the more that he can help you in, in wading through the deep waters that that we deal with. And, and so let's be faithful in trusting the promises that God gives us. In Proverbs 28, verse 20, talking about being faithful, a, a faithful man shall abound with blessings, but he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent. And so I don't even need to deal with the last part of that. You know, the, uh, so, so many um, seek the 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 joy of the Lord through finances. And, and God's joy isn't going to be bought with, with anything that this world has. And you'll never have the joy of the Lord by 
uh, seeking the things of the world, you know, and, and those preachers that come out and, and tell you that all of the, the material goods are, are blessings of God and that we need to have those, uh, you know what, in, in the Old Testament, I do believe in the Old Testament many times that, <clears throat> that he blessed faithfulness with, with riches. We, we see that with Job. We see that with Abraham, uh, uh, the, these guys were ones that, that were given a lot. And uh, New Testament, we don't see that so much. As a matter of fact, we see a lot in the New Testament of, of persecution. We, we see that uh, material goods are a responsibility and, and not so much a, uh, a blessing, but a responsibility that we have to use them in a, in a way that's honoring and pleasing to God. And and, and I believe that it just shows us the sufficiency that we have in our Savior and the sufficiency that we have in, in knowing that, that God has things under control and that, that we are content with what God has given us and, and be content with that. And then if he does give you more along the way, then we're, we're a good steward with it and we use it to honor and please God and, and we... Uh, look to him, you know, to use it however way that he wants us to use it and, and to allow him to be honored and, and pleased in all the things that we're doing. So, I don't know, those are some of the thoughts that the, the biggest thing is just being, just being faithful with the things that we have, right? And, and being thankful. I, I believe that we'll be faithful with what we have if, if we will... Uh, be thankful. Be faithful and be thankful. If you're thankful for it, you be faithful. If you're faithful, you be thankful. And and it all goes together. And and uh, and exactly. I mean, Christ Christ needs to be our number one passion. Anthony, that's good. And and uh, keep him first place in in everything that we do. And then stay in the Word of God. In I, Psalm 119, I'm reading through it right now and in, in, uh, finishing up Psalms for the second time this year. And Psalm 119 just shows us the importance of his word. Are, are we thankful for his word? I mean, let's, let's be truly thankful for his word. Where would we be without the Bible? I mean, where, and, and the devil knows that. That's why he's tried to destroy it from day one and, and tried to, uh, reinterpret God's word. I mean, we, we just see that over and over, how thankful we ought to be for his word and, and to spend time in it. And if we're thankful for it, we're going to spend time in it. And, and you find that you stay in the word of God and it protects you. In Psalm 119, I read this in verse, uh, uh, Psalm 119, and I wrote down, That wasn't the one that I, that I actually I wanted to. Uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> Psalm 119, verse 113 says, I hate vain thoughts, but thy law do I love. I, I mean, that that's a, a truly a powerful statement, right? But there's also another one, and, and I got to find it, and I don't know why... I don't know why I didn't, uh, it guards me from iniquity. And so I'm going to find that one. Okay. So I, I thought I, I thought I highlighted it, but I, but I didn't. And, uh, um, I apologize. I'm sorry. I shouldn't be doing this right now. You guys are wondering what in the world am I? I really want to find that that verse. Oh, here it is. All right. Sorry. <laughs> it's not 113. It's 133. Okay. This is this is the verse. Order my steps in thy word, and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. I, so I, I know that there there are a lot of a lot of battles that we have, 
and and they're I, I call them pet sins. You know that those are the ones that every individual. It's different for all of us. The the pet sin that we have that one that that is our nemesis. You know, it's the one that really challenges us, and and the one that that many times we're doing battle with it. One day we win, the next day we lose it. Right, and and uh, we're we're all different with that. Right, and. But but here here's the thing. What do you, what do you do with that? Do you just give up? I, I think a lot of people do. They just give up and then they just walk in the way of the world and they quit battling because they don't like the fight, right? And and uh, they really they just lose when they do that. And and the thing is is they don't just lose that battle, but then that they're headed down a, a horrible cliff that. Is, is going to take them over a cliff of total destruction in their lives. And, and it's not going to just stop because they don't want to fight anymore, right? Well, here, order my steps in thy word. The thing that we need to do is whether your, your pet sin gets the best of you today or not, you stay in the battle. Every day you stay in the battle and, and you, you fight that. And how do you fight that? By staying in the word of God, by Staying on your knees, and and by that, not necessarily, you know, uh, physically on your knees praying all the time, but um, truly having an attitude of prayer, right? And so, uh, walking with God closely and telling Him of the the issues that you have, and and when you're having those temptations or that battle with your pet sin is is at, at its most right then, you know, it's then that. You ask the Lord to bring a, a verse to mind. You you ask him to help <clears throat> help you to bind those thoughts and bind those imaginations and and bind those attitudes and bind those emotions that that take you to that point. And, and so it, here, and then you ask him, order my steps, Lord, in thy word, and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. Look, every one of us as believers can have victory over that pet sin that you have. And uh, how do we do that? By being faithful, by being honorable, by trusting God's word, by placing more faith in the power of the working of the Holy Spirit in your life and and asking him to uh, help you and, and give you wisdom and protect you and keep you from, from those temptations. I mean, there's all kinds of things that, that God can do if you're willing to do battle and stay in the battle, all right? So never quit in, in that and let's stay in the battle and, and uh, win that victory <clears throat> that God wants us to have. So you know, those are some of the thoughts that I had this morning. And then I was reading in Daniel today and <clears throat> I'm ready for Daniel chapter six tomorrow, but you know, I was just thinking, I was thinking in these first five chapters, you know, you have Daniel one where, where they're taking captive and it's there that he, that he uh, tells the guy that's watching over him that, look, we don't want to eat the, the food that your King gives us. We don't want to drink the wine that, that you, you're giving us. We want to eat what, what God has told us to eat, and, and we want to be different. We, we want to be allowed to do that, and so he did, and so he takes his first stand, right? And, and uh, we see God blesses that. We, we see him then uh, rise to importance when, in chapter 2 when uh, it's there that, that he uh, interprets the, the dream for Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel chapter 3, we have the fire in the furnace, you know, and, and uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and, and we see the character of those three men, and chapter 4, we see Nebuchadnezzar is judged for his uh, pride and his arrogance, and uh, then chapter 5 now, we see uh, Nebuchadnezzar's son, uh, uh, Belteshazzar, who uh, sees the, the Belshazzar, uh, sees the writing on the wall and, and Daniel stands against him and <clears throat> tells him what's going on. And I, I guess the only, the, the thought that came to my mind today is that nation now for several years, uh, I mean, we're, we're several years now into the, 
into the captivity and and uh actually daniel i I believe lives through the entire captivity and uh i i believe that daniel is able uh possibly to even see when uh the first group are uh sent back into uh uh israel to reestablish the the temple there and um but I, I just thought, I thought, you know what? There, there's a man that, for close to seventy years, or right at seventy years, was faithful and honorable to just preach and teach the word of God. And you, you know what? Our, you know what our families need? Our families need those who would dare to be a Daniel, that will just keep standing and be honorable and faithful to God, and and be biblical in their behavior and. And be the example that God wants us to be, right? And it is a battle every day. But choose to be that and, and choose to stand and, and uh, allow God to, to use you and your own family. And then also, I, I think <clears throat> I think of our churches in our communities and, and I think of so many of them that have gone by the wayside that have fallen into the traps that are are set by the devil and 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 even in our own minds and and seeking to I don't know they 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 think that they have a a better idea than than God's idea God's idea has always been that he will confound the world with preaching that's it okay we we can we can add all the other stuff to a worship service and um, we can, and I think we ought to sing praises to God. I think they ought to be singing praises to God, not to man. I don't think it's to bring praise, honor, and glory to man in any way. It's to bring praise, honor, and glory to God in, in what we're singing, right? I think that's important. I think the fellowship is very important. I think that Um, uh, eating together and praying together, all of those things are vital, but the most important aspect is the preaching of God's word. And, And churches have lost that. And when they lose that, they lose the power of God and they're no longer used as a, uh, any, any kind of a testimony by God to make a difference in their community. And, And so I just pray that our church years from now, if God tarries and, and we're all dead and gone one day, that that Platte Valley Baptist Church is still preaching and proclaiming the word of God. And just like Daniel, you know, just dare to be a Daniel and dare to be faithful and just be honorable, even in the challenges that, that you have to deal with, just be faithful and honorable to God and and you'll find that that uh, God will bless that. And the last thing is Second Peter chapter two. I read this talking about false prophets, talking about false teachers that are out there. And verse eighteen: For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escaped from them who live. In error, you know, I, I think that there there are always those out there who who are are seeking to make merchandise of of uh, believers, and they're seeking to make merchandise of of those who are in the church. And just you, you know what, beware of that. Beware of of the company that you keep. Beware of those that you listen to, and vet the ones that you listen to. You know, and and uh, uh, make certain that that their life backs up what they're saying. And uh, it's so difficult to do that to someone who's on the internet or on TV or even the radio. You don't know anything about them, and and that's why it's important. Get involved in your local church and and help that church family to stay faithful and honorable until the day God calls us home. Right. And those are the things. So let's get out there. Remember Psalm 68. Remember the the benefits that he loads us with every day. Let's be thankful for that. And let's be faithful to him. And, and we'll find him to uh, uh, 
be such a blessing. And, and Adam, I, I see uh, you're on here and uh, I, I'm sorry. Guys, pray for Adam Donez, if you would. Uh, he says he's very ill and needs our prayers. I know he's been having some real struggles with his health. And so you guys pray for Adam and uh, we will be doing that. And uh, we, uh, we definitely need prayers, don't we? So let's pray for each other. And let's get out there. Let's have a great week. Let's be honorable and faithful to God. And uh, let's walk closely with him. And so remember, I won't be on here tomorrow. I'm taking the kids to the airport. Unless we get snowed out, then I'll probably be on here. And uh, But we will uh, endeavor to be back on here Wednesday the rest of the week. So God bless you guys. And let's have a great day today.